There are three different kinds of saddles that we think that you need to know about to increase your deer hunting success. Okay, the first kind of saddle that we think you should be paying attention to is what I'm gonna call a land bridge saddle. And a land bridge saddle is pretty much what it sounds like. It connects one big piece of land to another big piece of land. And in this case, it is uh, this large ridge system right here. So this big taller ridge system that's sitting this high. And then we have a secondary ridge system that's sitting this high that comes off that main ridge system. And where those two meet, there's a saddle right there. And this is what it looks like on the map. So here's our big main ridge system. And then here coming off the very edge of it is this big secondary ridge system. This is pretty much exactly what Jacob was targeting back in December when he shot a mature buck um, on some Alabama public land that we were hunting. And it's set up exactly like this. And the reason he hunted it is because it was a saddle where this one nice ridge system, we'd been seeing deer on it all week, connected to this other larger ridge system. And we were just thinking, you know, it was the rut and anything coming off that big main ridge system, if it wanted to come onto our ridge system where all these does were, it had to go somewhere around that saddle. Um, and so that's why he set up on it and he ended up killing a big mature buck. And so that's, that's exactly what this sets up like. If there's any deer anywhere on this hillside or anywhere over here on the secondary ridge system and they're wanting to go, they're wanting to travel from one area to the next, they're gonna have to go through this spot or go very close to the spot. And a recent podcast guest, Justin Houston, actually described hunting spots like this and he's had a lot of success on mature bucks in spots like this as well. And one thing that he said is that he'll see bucks that actually cruise below that saddle a lot of the time. And that's what this kind of sets up as. Um, you could imagine like a deer walking this line right here, you know, coming off this main ridge system and he just swings right here below that saddle and kind of give you a little bit of a closer look. And this is something that we saw continuously when we were hunting those mountains in Alabama this fall. Uh, those bucks, they would walk right below that saddle and they would stop and they would look up there at the saddle and they would listen for a while and they would kind of hang around and then they'd keep going and they never actually come up and over the saddle especially on saddles that, that set up similar to this one that I'm showing you right here. So that's something to keep in mind, um, being able to set up where you can actually shoot off the edge of the hill below that saddle to catch those bucks cruising beneath it. So that's pretty much how that one's set up. Um, like I said, Jacob killed a really nice buck on it. To hear the full podcast with Justin Houston, make sure you go check out the description below. I'll have it linked down there. The second kind of saddle that we wanna show you is what I'm gonna call a hub saddle. And this is what I actually end up killing my deer on, on that same hunt in December. Um, it sets up in an area just like this, uh, where you have two thermal hubs on either side of your saddle. So let's kind of zoom out a little bit. And with any of these saddles, it's kind of important to zoom out and get a good perspective of what the whole landscape looks like and what everything interacting with each other kind of looks like. And in this case, we have this ridge system right here. So follow my cursor, that's kind of the spine of the ridge system. And then we have these little secondary knobs and ridges coming off the side of it. Um, if any deer is wanting, again, kind of the same thing as the, the land bridge, but just on a lower scale. So this is actually low, this is in a valley. The other one's up high on the mountain, this is down low in the valley. Um, if anything's wanting to come from this main ridge system and go to one of these smaller secondary ridges, same principle as the land bridge, it's gonna wanna cross right there. What makes this spot extra good, in my opinion, is the thermal hubs. So this right here is a thermal hub right there. That's one thermal hub. And then on the other side of this saddle, we have this thermal hub as well. So both of those are gonna be places that during the rut, bucks are gonna congregate there. There's gonna be scrapes there. There's gonna be a lot of does coming through there. And it's just gonna see a lot of deer traffic. And it's, it's a hub because of the thermals falling to it, but it's like a social hub for the deer too. And they use it like that. And so the saddle's so good because it's obviously the path of least resistance from one hub to the next hub. So if one deer's over here and he's wanting to go from this hub to that hub, he's just gonna walk right up and over to that saddle. It's the path of least resistance and it's usually very safe. In the case of my buck that I shot in December, he was using this uh, specifically, I think, because of the mountain laurel and the good cover that was in there. So there was actually mountain laurel coming up this draw and pretty much going all the way right up into the saddle. And I couldn't see him until he popped out of that and he was already in the saddle. So he's actually using thick cover and a saddle at the same time where those two features kind of come together and we have no, we'll have another video soon on compounding features uh, that kind of goes over that. But that's why he was using it, he felt safe. And we kind of have a saying that deer like to use the path of least resistance, that is the most safe. 
So just because it's the path of least resistance doesn't mean they're going to walk it. You know, a highway is a path of least resistance. It's easy flat walking with no cover, but it's not very safe, so they don't use it. So kind of the same principle here. Um, you're, you're looking for the path of least resistance that is the safest. And in these cases, this is a really safe way for them to get around because they can very quickly, you know, if there's danger right here in this hub, they can very quickly just jump over to that hub and they're in a whole different drainage and it's easy for them to get away from anything. So that's one reason I think that sets up really good and I had a lot of luck in a terrain feature exactly like this. So that's definitely something to be looking for. The third kind of saddle, and this is one that I really like and I've been hunting for years, is what I, I just call a landscape saddle. And by landscape saddle, I mean that it's just a really giant saddle on the landscape that uh, kind of separates two land masses. And when most people learn what a saddle looks like on a map, you, you'll quickly notice if you live in any kind of hilly terrain that they're like kind of everywhere. And it's kind of hard to differentiate like which saddle is actually worth hunting versus which one isn't. And so like if we just take this scene right here, just what you can see on the map, like if you follow my cursor, this would be a saddle. This area right here would be a saddle. This is a saddle. Saddle, 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 saddle. I mean, there's a lot of saddles, you get the point. Um, so what kind of separates these from one another? The one I have pinned is clearly a, a very deep, um, very um, defined saddle on the map. So if we zoom in a little bit more, we can see, like look at this ridge top right here, this, this fat line on the top of the map, that's 4,800 feet. If we look at this line that's in the bottom of the saddle that kind of wraps around, we can see that's at 4,400 feet. So it's a couple hundred feet difference from basically the top of the saddle down to the bottom of the saddle. And a saddle like that, first of all, is significant from a terrain perspective because it's gonna force movement for deer. Unless they wanna literally climb hundreds of extra feet in elevation, they're gonna go through that saddle. If they're traversing this hillside right here and they wanna come across that ridge, or if they even wanna cut across the bottom of it, uh, it's just, it's a really good hard pinch point. And it's something that if you're a guy that's hunting in hills or mountains, this is, this is the kind of thing you're using to your advantage. That, that terrain is forcing movement right here. One catch to hunting a saddle like this is that it's so big that sometimes it can be kind of hard to actually figure out where the deer are using the saddle because you probably can't sit in one spot and cover the whole thing. Uh, you're gonna have to get in that saddle and actually scout it and find where those trails are and where all the sign is and sit where you can cover that spot. But you're probably not gonna be able to see the entire saddle. Um, unless, unless it sets up like with a road bed, a huntable road bed that runs through the middle or something like that, which we like to hunt here in Alabama, you know, a closed road bed where there's no vehicular traffic on that road and it's legal to hunt. A lot of times those logging roads and stuff will go through these saddles just like this, go right smack through the middle of it. And we'll like to hunt stuff like that because we can see a really long ways through a really good terrain feature. So we'll take advantage of that. But if you can't see all the way through the thing, especially if there's thick cover in it, which makes it better from a hunting perspective, as in the deer are gonna be in there as long as it's nice and thick. There's gonna be a lot more deer in there if it's thick than if it wasn't. But the, the catch to that is if it's thick, you're not gonna really be able to cover the whole thing, even with a rifle. So you gotta kind of fine tune your setup and figure out where they are. But when you do fine tune that setup, you can be in for some really, really good hunts in a spot like this. The other reason that I really love this kind of saddle is we hunt a lot of really pressured wildlife management areas here around the south. And this is actually a kind of saddle that most people overlook. It's so big and so defined that either they just scan right over the top of it or they don't really think of it as like a saddle or they, they can't figure out how to hunt it because it's so big they kind of leave it alone. And so a lot of times you'll find guys more on these kinds of saddles right here where my cursor is at. Um, so I, I typically don't have a lot of competition in these big landscape saddles like that. Um, but that's just another reason I like to hunt them, you know, get, get away from the pressure and it's something that forces movement. So I've had a lot of luck in this. I actually killed two bucks in two hunts out of a spot just like this in Alabama a couple years back, uh, during the rut, just cruising bucks, killed two mature bucks out of it in, uh, in two back to back hunts, which is really cool. All right guys, so that's the third saddle. Like I said, those are three saddles that I think that if you add those to your lineup and you kind of start looking for them and, and pursuing those kinds of spots with intent, I think it's gonna work out for you. I think you're gonna have some success in areas like that. If you like this content, make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel. And hey, if you wanna see more map breakdowns like this, uh, give us some ideas, you know, drop them in the comment section, let us know what you think. Let us know what you would like to see and we'll be sure to crank it out. 
uh, we're, we're big map scouting people over here, so there's definitely plenty of content that we can crank out. Be looking for some more videos just like this one coming out in the future, so make sure you hit that notification bell as well. So we appreciate you guys watching this video, and y'all stay Southern.